you'll read from here, oh. uh, from right there to the end. Yeah. Hiroshi. Hiroshi has professors who say there is no suffering, there is only chemistry. Suffering is a description, but chemistry is the structure. In any case, a pill can dampen some receptors, dim the lights a little. Surgery can make him care a little less. Pain and suffering are not, in the end, the same thing. One can be cleaved from the other like a diamond split along its planes, so that you feel pain, but you are no longer bothered by it. He has seen a patient huddling in a corner at the mercy of a condition so devastating that even a slight breeze from the window would cause him unbearable suffering. After surgery, he told his doctors that the pain was exactly as it was, but he did not feel it as greatly. It's as if, he had said, a cool blandness in his eyes. The pain is not being done to me. One day, maybe in 10 years or 50 years, a surgeon will be able to, to do this with disturbing precision, destroy a whirlpool of memory, an entire system of feelings, but in the meantime, it's like taking a hatchet to a spider's web. Well, uh, again, we had um, everybody read this passage in the seminar, and we'll give you a sense of how one of them responded to it. And the five questions, they read it one time, and they wrote one word about the passage. They read it a second time, and they wrote one sentence about the passage. They read it a third time, and they wrote one paragraph about the passage. They read it a fourth time, and they wrote in a stream of consciousness vein everything that went through their mind. And they read it a fifth time, and they gave my working definition of, and the word was suffering, my working definition of suffering. Well, here's one of the seminar members. One word, Siri, one sentence. The pain was exactly as it was. There are no words to express pain beyond pain or beyond was. One paragraph, the last sentence is disturbing, almost scary. Our medical knowledge, techniques, much of the time, are like taking a hatchet to a spider's web. And if it, and if it is healing, it is also terrifyingly erasing, a blotting out with disturbing precision. A surgeon can destroy a whirlpool of memory. Stream of consciousness. There is an unbearable precision to Madeleine's writing. It's so lucid, so searing, so quietly devastating. It's as if she wrote this passage with a scalpel. She carved out the words, and like the surgeon, she is so close to destroying a whirlpool of memory. Does she worry that she'll get the story wrong by misrepresenting someone's story, thereby cause this blotting out? It makes me wonder about the ethics of representing difficult histories. Does Madeleine Tien worry that, in her effort to save unknown histories, she may, in fact, cause them to disappear forever? Or on the contrary, does she view herself as the patient? Or does she wonder that Telling people stories offers them a momentary peace, a balm that gives 
some temporary relief, but works mostly to mask the pain rather than heal the wound. What do painkillers represent in the world of writing? Is it telling one's story? Or having one's story told? Or is it enabling a forgetting so that the story is never told? My working definition of suffering? Suffering is constant unrelenting pain and it feels as if it will never end. When it does end, it becomes impossible to truly remember and recall. It becomes at a remove. So we invite you to respond to that, Ms. Tian. <laughs> With my scalpel. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really great writing. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Um, well, it's interesting because this was also something that came up in the afternoon. Uh, we talked about, I had this feeling that writing a letter, writing a I was trying to write letters to my mom who had passed away, but I felt that in the act of writing the letter, I was erasing her somehow because everything was from my point of view. And that even in the act of trying to speak to her, I was actually working out the very same sentence. Um, it's true. I think that is what is, but, but I, th I think everything this, this writer has, has brought up about the ethics of the, the memory, the forgetting, the erasing, I, I really think that goes to the, the whole heart of the artistic project and, and in choosing something and framing something and making the decisions about how to put it out. You're, it's more about what you, what you don't, what you leave out, what you don't say. Um, it's interesting to think that artistic process is actually, at essence, a process of erasing because uh, mm -hmm. you know, reality life is so big and it reminds me of a a line when we were reading, it's a Hannah Arendt line, she's come again, um, where she says that what makes stories different is that it's a, it's a humanizing of the wilderness of experience. And I've always remembered that because it, 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 it is what it is, as big as that is, but no more. It's not a closing, you know, it's a humanizing. Um, and that wilderness, it's true, reality is wilderness. Um, yes. <laughs> 